but yeah, yeah, no. So like, yes, yeah, the first, uh, first podcast that we're having and I'm a super pumped to do it. And, uh, and yeah, man, I mean, like, uh, I, I can remember, I don't know. Do you remember, uh, when I, if you go back in the, in our, in our YouTube channel, you'll see like some of the interviews I did, like from two years ago, they were actually called empire universe podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you weren't doing just MMA at the beginning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like what happened was I was kind of like, I, I think I didn't, I, I couldn't find my footing. I didn't really know like what I was going to do. I was like, ah, like I like sports. I'll just co- maybe I'll just cover sports. But the more forward I went with everything and found that I need to find one direction and one topic. And, you know, obviously we're both passionate about combat sports and MMA. And that's kind of what I, that's what I decided to do. And then obviously I got you to join the team not too long ago. And, and so I'm trying to branch out and try to, build my brand so yeah right. it, it, it's crazy how far i've come from doing it empire universe podcast turn it into a media you know strictly media interviewing fighters and now we're going to do like a whole uh podcast based upon maybe our the interviews we've done or or uh just the things that are going on so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have uh, to do this with you so likewise man I'm excited for the opportunity and like I said, I, these guys talk isn't going anymore. So it's another way to just shoot the shit and do podcasts again. Like I, I had, I, it's kind of crazy. I had, I, I wrote down this when the beginning of January, 2022, I wrote down a bunch of goals I want to do. I've accomplished like, I think 10 of them. I've accomplished eight of them. One of them was to start podcasting again. And here we are. So. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, I remember when we were chit chatting about like, how are we going to, how am I going to do this? I don't really know what I want to do, Chris. And then, I think like I, I figured it out and I just tried to keep it. And then you brought the idea that we got to do this like a weekly thing. So for people that are going to be watching, this is going to be like a, like a weekly, hopefully weekly thing that we're going to be doing talking about pretty, pretty much MMA if you haven't figured it out already. So yeah, it, it's uh, and I, and I remember watching a lot of your stuff too, um, like following you. And then I remember we did that, like I that a little bit of a cross pollination going on. You, you, I think you, you had me on the, on the show i think well i was gonna i wanted to talk about that how we uh we started chatting i think my first time i saw your page is you interviewed josh hill around the same time i did before the raffion stotts fight and i saw yeah, your page yeah. and i was like okay like let, let's take a look and i creeped down and i saw your work and i was uh i was pretty impressed i'm not gonna like i saw like some good fighters and i think i dm'd you because i was and I saw that you're from Chatham and like, I have family there and I was like, no way. Like, it's pretty cool. And, uh, I saw your page and I was just like, how does he get these guys? Cause at the time I was only DMing them and 90% of the time they don't answer. Right. So you obviously taught me that you got to talk to managers and find contacts and stuff. But then, yeah. And then I think I, what I was like, well, what he, this guy likes MMA. We should chat. We probably get along. So, and here we are. Right. So yeah, like I, I can't remember. I have to watch back. But are you the guys that that did Butterbean? Did, wait, what? <laughs> Butterbean, the the boxer. The boxer? No, I wish he's a legend. Okay, who the fuck did it? Because I remember I, I wanted to do like kind of like the same thing, like have them when I was doing like kind of like quote unquote podcast work. Um, I wanted to interview them or I wanted to chat with them. Maybe I did already, but. Oh no shit. It was uh this guy from London, Ontario. Um him and him and his uh buddy, they kind of had their own uh I think it's oh, fuck. I feel so bad for forgetting their their podcast or the media, whatever they're called. Uh but they did like um they they've interviewed a lot of people. Actually, he was trying to hook me up with um oh that girl in flyweight. I think she's in the top five right now. Um in the UFC. I'm just trying to think um uh she she fought Valentina maybe for the two belt title defenses ago. Okay, but she uh, her... J- Lauren Murphy. Yeah, Lauren Murphy. Yeah, they were trying to hook me up with Lauren Murphy, but because uh, he I guess had a really good relationship with her, but nothing kind of you know things fell through and uh, yeah. And anyway, they interviewed Butterbean and apparently That's I guess sick. yeah. Well, I don't know. Like I I guess like I wouldn't mind interviewing him, but uh, I guess like apparently. Yeah, they, they said he's kind of being a dick and all that kind of stuff. I was like, well, I don't know. Like, you never know. You can find you can catch someone on a bad day, and you know when you when you schedule interviews with fighters, like I find 
you know, you just never know what you're going to find. Like most fighters, like if I've interviewed them before, I kind of know what they're like. I know their kind of pace and I know if they're a little camera shy or they're just, if you know how it's going to flow. So if you've interviewed somebody once, you kind of have an idea of like what you're going to get. Gonna go. So you never know, like they could have just caught the guy on a bat. He was just having a bad day. You never know. Like could have just got an argument with somebody five minutes going, you know, when you're heated and you're not Hello. feeling great. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, and most of the time when you're interviewing these guys, it's towards fight camps, right? Oh, no. So they're cutting weight, they're training every day, they're sore, and, and that you don't even know what's going on in their personal life either, like kids, wife, whatever, right? So it's yeah. uh, that's part it's part of the game. So you got you never know what you're gonna get. Well, and I mean, I'm obviously, as you know, I'm in the contest prep right now, and I'm not even in the worst part of it yet. I still have I'm like 12 weeks so. Um, of the I'm doing the open bodybuilder and even even now like I'm like there's times I come home and I'm just like it, it's more when I come home and I'm hungry like I just trained really really hard and I do a lot of cardio and I'm really hungry that's usually where I get really freaking grumpy and I'm like and, and if I have to like cook and the cats jump up and knock and shit out you know that it's just things like <laughs> that right so I mean, I, I know for a fact right now, I have no idea how, how these fighters are feeling, especially some of them that have like a, a fight, like, like two weeks out and, you know, me and I'm bitching and whining because I'm still 12 weeks out of just doing bodybuilding, let alone barely doing much weight cutting as it, or water weight cutting as it is, where they're mm -hmm. like, they got to cut their weight and then they got to do a shit ton of water cutting. So water weight cutting. So yeah, man. Yeah. So wait, what made you like want to get into bodybuilding? Um, well, like I, I've always been like, so obviously MMA is a passion of mine. Um, but like on the side, uh, bodybuilding, I've always worked out. I remember when I was in college, I, I went to college when I was turning, I was 18, turning 19. And, you know, I, I was about maybe, I think my heaviest was about 236 in college. And I mean, 236 at my height being 5'8", yeah, you know, you're not looking great. I mean, mm. I was more of a, like a husky. I was always that, that husky looking guy. I had a, a bit of a puffy face and and whatnot. But uh, yeah, no, I just knew I needed to do something. I wasn't happy with myself, as many overweight people may experience at times. And uh, I just decided, I'm like, you know what? I got to do something. And it kind of started off with, I just did a shit ton of cardio, maybe a little bit of weights. And I lost a bunch of weight. And then I wanted to, you know, obviously, then you look at some of those guys that got a little bit of muscle on them. And it's like, yeah, I want to get some muscle on. So I had a bit of like, I was going up and down weight for so long. And then I, I did have someone coaching me uh, before the pandemic. And then obviously the pandemic happened. And then that that was all done over with. And then um, I think uh, just last year, I reached out to a guy named Tim. Um, and uh, he... Uh, I, he's my coach now and um it actually just started out as i just want to i just want to lose weight you know i have this kind of body blah 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 blah. he's like yeah no problem and then he reached out to me after i did a little bit of a cut and he's like hey you know you want have you ever thought about doing a show and i i, I and at first i was like i don't know like because you know that that's a, lot a big of step it's a, a big step and i mean it's a big step from just losing weight and cutting weight because i mean that's that part it's still hard, but it's not, um, I don't find it's like, it's not easy either, but it's a lot harder when now you have to learn how to, and if you don't know how to pose, you have to learn posing, you have to yeah. practice every day. And, uh, so that's how I kind of got to where I am now, but I know for yourself, um, I know like for yourself, you do like personal training and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, time, I, I had to ask you like what it was that you did, and then you're like, yeah, I'm personal. Well, hey, well, now we finally have time to tell you about it, other than just short little um, conversations yeah, yeah, yeah. before we interview guys. But yeah, I've been I've been in the fitness industry since I was like 18, maybe. Uh, kind of started off like, um, well, I went to school for sport administration, and I've always wanted to work for professional sports or a sports organization. That was my goal. So this is like you know, media's kind of in the right field, I'd say, but yeah. anyways, back, backtracking a bit. So, uh, like it was just a part-time gig while I was in college. I was kind of cool. Like I was like, Oh yeah, I'll work at the gym. Like I went to uh, Georgian college in Barry and, uh, somehow I turned it into a career. I don't know how, but uh, I just, um, it just kept going towards that way. Like I finished working there because they only hire students. If you're not a student anymore, you can't work there. So I had to leave 
And then as soon as I graduated my second program, public relations, um, that was about January, 2020, I was just chilling a little bit and COVID hits. And then I started working out or working at good life. And just for another thing, just something to do until I find a, a real career. Hopefully I've been like, I've, it's tough, man. I've tried, I've applied to so many jobs. Like I wanted to work for the Raptors. I wanted to work for MLC. That was a big goal of mine, but, and then I just gained so much experience, like working at these industries. I ended up getting my personal training license. And now I work at the Toronto cricket and curling club, I'm a personal trainer. I'm a personal training um, coordinator and I'm a group fitness instructor as well. Uh, I never thought I'd be in the fitness industry. I just thought I always th- said like, Oh, it's not really enough money in it, but I'm, I'm not complaining right now. So. Well, and you know what, like, and I know it's a cliche, people say, you know, oh, you know, it's not always about the money, it's what you love to do. But at the end of the day, how expensive everything's getting, it sometimes is, it can be a little bit, part yeah. of it can be about the money, right? It, it is. It's, yeah. You gotta, you know, you gotta put food on the table and eat a roof over top of your head. So it's, the money is definitely one of them. And it's, a, uh, you know, like, I work in a private gym and it, private gym industries different like i think it's there's some very very wealthy people at this club i work at so well and the thing is like i don't know like i i do have my personal opinion about uh personal like having personal trainers and like i like i just find you get some uh the problem with i find when people want to do like personal training or they want to get uh, unfortunately people have these un unrealistic expectations of themselves like um of what the personal trainer is going to do for them they think well this personal trainer is just going to shoot me all this stuff and it's going to work out fine and then you have a lot of these other personal trainers that just use um they use what that works for them and then they expect it's going to work with every client well unfortunately if you don't have your personal fitness license if you don't understand if you don't learn those things prior and you think that oh i'll just send them i'll just send them a you know, a rough copy of what I do. Well, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's yeah. There's a lot of shitty personal trainers out there. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not too difficult to get your, your certification. So I've seen so many people that I had no idea are licensed or have have their certification. I'm just like, Oh shit. Like this person's a personal trainer. I wonder if they're good or not, but you, there is some really good ones. And then you can tell there's some really bad ones that are just there to, you know, get their, their check. And, but I actually, I'm not training like clients right now. I actually do boxing personal training. So I do uh, 30 minute pad sessions right now. So it's doing really well right now in my work. So I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. And you know what though? Like um, it's even, even if you're not, if, even if you're not, uh, you know, Floyd's uh, coach, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not <laughs> on his level of coaching, um, even just getting someone, if you have a basic knowledge of how to do crosses and, and rights and, and straight punches and, and whatever, whatever you're doing hooks, yeah. if you have a basic knowledge of that and you can get somebody moving, it's not even about like learning how to fight. It's just get, it's good cardio and you get them moving. Like you, you get the, yeah, yeah. They, they love it. Like uh, a lot of these people obviously aren't fighters. They're, they're not going to go to a private club to become a boxer. Right. Like, yeah. so it's, it's new to them and you know, you get 30 minutes ripping combinations on the pad, double jabs, crosses, hooks, like you said, and 30 minutes, man, you're, <clears throat> you're, excuse me, you're sweating for sure. So even myself holding the pads is a workout. So, well, and then exactly. And you get something out of it too. Uh, besides obviously it's your job, but yeah, you get a little bit of something out of it too. Oh yeah. It's great. We, they, they pay well there. And, uh, like I said, it's, I like doing it. I like, I like teaching. I, I teach a, a kickboxing class too, once a week. And uh, I love that because it's something I'm passionate about. So it's my work <laughs> giving me the opportunity to do that. It's, it's just unreal. Do you kind of, do you get like those uh, people that they start hitting pads and they think like they're the next big thing? They'll, they'll... Not, not yet. Not yet. I have some, I've had just like, you know, like middle, middle-aged women, middle-aged guys. And then I've had, <laughs> I've had some young kids, but a lot of them are just like, I think they're just doing it just for a little workout, you know, just something changed. One guy told me, he's like, I just want to learn how to defend myself a bit better. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll help you with that. So, and then other people are like, oh, I'm like, so I had a guy that's like, well, my wife wants me to get in shape. So, and I like boxing. I was like, okay. So, because yeah. boxing, fighting and boxing, it's a really weird thing to get into, like to just try. Like, I feel like a lot of fighters, like something they have, they fight because they have to fight. Like I started training because 
I was getting bar fights and I realized I had really good power. So I was like, I want to try it when I defend myself because I got jumped one time too. I went viral on TikTok. I don't even know if I ever told you that. No, you got to send it to me, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to send you that. So yeah, I got, yeah. I got I jumped, assaulted, long story short. So after that, I was like, damn, like I, I threw some decent hands and I was like, damn, like I really want to learn boxing because I was always into MMA and, uh, in the past like probably year i've been really following like a lot of boxing i got like i got friends that are pros now i'm training with friends that are pros like i think i'm okay and i i was gonna compete actually um at the brampton cup i don't know if you ever heard of that it's like one of the biggest amateur tournaments but it got my it got canceled in december it rescheduled it was july 22nd so a few weeks back but i've just been so busy like i can't i can't find a consistent gym with my work hours and stuff so mm -hmm. I try to hit the bag like once or twice a week. So like do you train anything at all or. Yeah, I used to Um, like I used to do like uh, a little bit of like, like I got my black belt in, in Shotokan karate kind of like Machida style. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, other than that, and I used to, I, I started to like a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I tried to come back and try to uh, upkeep with like, um, some of my, some of my, uh, what they call a syllabus. And, um, I tried to up, like, you know, keep up with that and try to relearn some of the stuff that I was going to start to, uh, continue to learn. But then, uh, when I got my black belt when I was like 16, as at that point where I just, the passion just wasn't there. Yeah, um, for sure. My parents threw me in there to keep, you know, to put me into shape, obviously it didn't work out too well. Cause then I started putting weight back on and, um, but yeah, I know, like, uh, you know, I guess like, uh, some of the guys that I, that I did do karate with, uh, we all got together and we were doing some, uh, some MMA and like all, uh, all around MMA. And, uh, um, some of the guys have have like the jujitsu background and, yeah. um, the rest you ever done, you ever done jujitsu? Well, yeah. And, and, and yeah, like, so we, we've done a lot of no gi, uh, yeah. uh rolling and things like that. So I got a good uh, background basis on jiu-jitsu, obviously nowhere near uh, a school level by any means. This is all unofficial, but uh, yeah, no, like I got a little bit of uh, knowledge um, prior to Nogi uh, uh, jiu-jitsu. So um, it, it's cool to kind of, when you watch the fights, like uh, even watching the fights last night, uh, you kind of like some of the wrestling. You watch what the guy's doing, and 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 my fiance and I were watching it, and I'm like, I'm talking about like, yep, watch, he's gonna probably go into side side control, and then what does he do? He goes right. In. Yeah. I can't remember which fight it was, but the guy had him on the ground. It might have been uh, Spivak, whatever. Oh, you, yeah. The the, the polar, polar bear. bear. Yeah. Polar bear. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was going, he was trying to get into side control there and uh, his wrestling was unreal last night. Anyway, I will get to the card. Um, it will break that down soon. That. What's that? I said, we'll break that down soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and his, yeah. So like, just, I could read everything. Like, it's just, I, I, I hate when people talk about, um, when, when you have like fights going on the wrestling and I understand how people can see it as being boring. Um, but like people gotta understand what the more you understand wrestling and jujitsu when you actually do it, yeah, and you realize how hard it is when you have someone much more experienced with you on top or or on, or even on the bottom, uh, it, you get you. I, I feel like you get a kind of better understanding and you get a better sense of uh knowing like why that why he's doing what he or she is doing. And, uh, it, it, and it, it kind of makes it more exciting to watch when you get what's going on. But at the same time, I get it when you have fights like, uh, you got a guy laying on top of the guy and he's not doing anything. Well, yeah, I get why the fans are booing, right? Yeah, no kill. So, but yeah, Jets is fun. I have a good friend of mine, Alex or Alessandro Roman Camargo. He's a world-class jujitsu guy. That's, um, I met him at one of my previous gyms I worked at. And just for our passion of fighting, he's like, dude, let me, you know what? I'll train you for free. I don't care. I just love teaching and stuff. And this was during like all the lockdowns and stuff. We were sneaking into gyms and training late at night, hoping the cops wouldn't see us as soon as we leave the gym and stuff. Like, remember those days? It's just insane. Dude. And that, that guy's a stud, man. Like, yeah, that was insane. But uh, 
that guy was a big part of me training me during lockdown me and him like obviously i wasn't working and he was uh like i think he was still working but we would train every day we'd run 10k we'd either roll or then we'd box i did it for i was like i was i was literally like in a training camp with that guy hitting pads like it was so much fun i missed those days but uh, that guy he's a stud and like going back to uh what you're saying like once you train jujitsu it's tiring it's it's so tiring man like mm-hmm. you are so sore from rolling around and someone's body weight on top of you and you're trying your best to get in a better position and you like all, you got all these keyboard warriors and couch potatoes thinking oh like you can't i could d- definitely roll around and get a rear naked choke easily like it's t- it's not that easy unfortunately so i mean i don't know i feel like they could probably yeah they could probably roll to get the doritos off the table pretty easily yeah but, seriously uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh and and i guess like yeah i I don't know it's yeah you i don't know i I get it like you're gonna have social media and then people are just gonna say what they want to say with against fighters but i gotta say the card last night was nothing short of like if i'm sure there's still people that have found something to explain uh to like totally uh not be happy with um last night but i gotta say first card and since 20 2014 uh, yeah, that had all finishes that doesn't always necessarily mean the whole card's good but you know when you have most of them were like knockouts and stuff like that i mean it was a freaking amazing card and the knockouts were like high class i mean one punch uh you brian know, battle that was oh that fuck. was a spectacular head kick well the thing is so when it happened when that when that knockout happened i was i was paying attention but i was kind of I, I was talking with my fiance about something and I think I looked down, uh, fuck, like cats were like doing something. I'm like, so I was grabbing at the cat and all I hear, and then I look up and all I see is like the kick. As soon as I look up at the screen, the kick caught him right behind the ear there. And it kind of just, just some goes, I mean, like he's laying on the ground. His eyes are fucking shut. It was like the, the Tiago Santos and, uh, or no, not Tiago Santos, um, Jamal Hill and, uh, and Johnny Walker when he knocked yeah, out Johnny Walker. I mean, the guy's fucking eyes were shut. You know when the guy's fucking gone. When his eyes are fucking shut, you know it's it's good night, Irene. But isn't it the worst, like, missing a knockout like that? Like, I had that happen to me last oh, weekend yeah. with Moreno and Kai Kara France. It was so hot, and it was just, I don't know why. I, I, I randomly got a nosebleed, like, and I'm like, shit, I felt the, no- yeah, like <laughs> I felt the blood right. going down. And all of a sudden, I heard the snap on Moreno's kick, and all I hear is Joe Rogan. Oh! God. And, and then i'm just like shit and this the ko you ever watch you ever see those memes of like like someone's like running or something and i'll or like yeah. look at someone's face and and it's like uh you know you run to the bathroom and then all you hear is oh he's hurt yeah when you're or when you're going to the bathroom and you hear joe rogan scream he's hurt and it's like those memes so funny yeah it, it sucks and you know what and, and i'm and i'm always the worst for it like you'll have fights where it kind of looks like, eh, you know, nothing's really happening. And you look for one freaking second down at your phone for something like someone's texting you and then you look up and then someone gets like, a, like, a, you know, knocker of the year knockout. Um, yeah. Actually sucks. I, so I didn't watch the, uh, you know, I can't remember which card it was. It was the one with uh, when Michael Chandler knocked out Tony Ferguson. Oh yeah, I missed that card too. I was in, on a plane. I mean, obviously, I got to see it after, but I can you imagine being in the presence to be able to watch that in real time? Like, oh, fuck. nasty! That was nasty. That's probably are you nasty. are you a fan of Chandler? I actually, uh, pretty cool story. Like he was on Instagram Live, and I tr- requested the join, and he accepted. But he was in Abu Dhabi. It was before the uh, Dan Hooker fight. And his Wi-Fi was so bad, it just cut out. And then he just he messaged me saying, "Sorry, man, Wi-Fi was so bad." And I just and like he sent me a video on through DM, and uh, yeah, and I was like, "Oh, no worries, man. Best of luck against Hooker." And then he said, "My man," something like that. It was cool. And I'm a huge Chandler fan. I think I've been watching him since Bellator. Um, I mean, t- him and Poirier next. What a freaking fight! Oh, I know it. That's. The thing with Poirier is like, that's why he gets so much fucking respect is that he just takes those really, I don't want to call it shitty. Just, he takes those really hard fights against guys that are going to bring it. Like you find, Gaethje, like, yeah, like Gaethje. Like, I mean, when, um, 
uh, who was that guy that that Connor beat for the lightweight? T- uh, Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez, like he beat fucking that. like not even if he beat him or or he win or, win or lose, but he's fought all those tough guys that are kind of the ones that maybe yeah they're not on a like a crazy win streak, but they're just dangerous guys. Yeah, um, I mean like Gaethje and and, and, and his like, resume I, is is nuts. Like Oliveira, Connor, Max Holloway, Gaethje. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to see him fight Nate Diaz. I mean, that was a whole spectacle, them trying to get going. But I, you know what, though? I think he would have put a beating on Nate, though. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. And, and the thing is, the only, the only thing I'm kind of like, so the one with him and uh, Chandler next, that's a good fight for both of those guys because they're both, it's both win, it's a win win for both guys. Yeah. Um, it's fight, fight of the night written all over it. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. I, I don't want to see either guy lose. That's the problem. I know. It's one of those fights. It's like, damn, like, like I, I love both guys. They are fan favorites. They bring it every time. Almost like you said, almost fight a night guaranteed just on paper right there. Well, and the, uh well the problem is is that you, you have some of those fights where you can easily look you you can you can uh say the screen, oh fucking scumbag, I hope he loses, right? But like with these two guys, you just can't say that. No, they're both true warriors former champions like it's i'm i'm really looking forward that i mean was that that's gonna be in uh the msg card november i think i think so don't quote me on that i think i don't know if it, it's not the fight's not confirmed at the time of recording right now but it's uh r- heavily rumored yeah i don't think it's official um but yeah that i think it's the wheels are in motion a lot of times too, even when like when when we're posting things for the Empire Universe media page, a lot of that stuff when I'm grabbing stuff from like Aaron Bronster or um, Ariel, those guys, Ariel, like those guys, like they have sources and usually it's pretty credible. Uh, but yeah, like until until either it gets posted for sure or like yeah, you get one of those guys posting it. Yeah, you never really know for sure because you get guys like Nate Diaz that run, run, you know, guy like him who runs his mouth on social media says, "Yeah, I'll fight," you know, so and so, and then you think, "Oh, yay!" You know, you, everyone gets excited, and then either the fight's off or it doesn't work out or contract talks. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot of a lot of Twitter talk and not a lot of fights actually happening. Yeah, but you know what? I get it. The, the fighters are just hustling, and, and it's yeah. all about trying to get the fights that they want. But man, fucking Nate Diaz and and Chimam that's uh i don't know man about that one that's a that's I, i'm not gonna lie like nate diaz is not nate diaz from five years ago but who beat mcgregor the first time but man like i just feel like chamayev like they are so like again I, I might be you know pushing it here a little bit but like i feel like ufc is trying so fucking hard to get chamayev like like winnable fights and no no disrespect to burns or any of his other like of Chamaya's other opponents, like Burns is a great guy, great fighter, and I mean he he showed that hey fuck you ain't getting through me. And an arguably animal. he won that. Arguably, like he he won that he won that fight. So I don't know. I personally thought that he that he won that fight, but um, yeah, I, I just feel like they're they're definitely pushing Chamaya to kind of uh yeah to kind of win. Well, he's a draw, right? And yeah. uh... I see this fight going two ways. Either Chemayev dominates or like, I mean, he looked like he was slowing down against Gilbert Burns. And Nate Diaz doesn't slow down. If, you no. tell me, if that fight goes to the fourth or fifth, Nate gets him on the ground, who knows what can happen. They got to make that five rounds. It is. It's a main event. Oh, oh it is? Shit. Yeah, it's, but that card in general, it's like in September, it's not even pay-per-view worthy. That's the only good fight. The rest are just, just not good. You got to look... I, I forget the number. If it's two September? September, is that two seventy nine? Oh, two seventy nine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's not. Hopefully, they add a couple more big fights to that because right now the current lineup's not too sh- good. I know it. It's going to sell pay per views regardless. You got two of the biggest stars in the UFC, but it's not. It's not looking great. Who's Who's your favorite fighter? Oh shit. Um. It, you see, like the thing is, there's a lot of group. There's a good group of got you know guys and the ladies that I really like watching. I don't know if I really have a favorite fighter because, yeah, 
I try not to get too emotionally invested in one fighter because then when they lose, you you know, it, it oh, sucks tell me to about watch it. them lose. But I don't know. There's a handful like of fighters that I do enjoy watching. And I wouldn't necessarily go over the big stars, but obviously, you know, I do like Dust. I like Poirier. I like Chandler. But, like, if I really want to get serious about what I'm going to say, I really like Valentina. Uh, Valentina mm -hmm. Shevchenko has always been my girl. She's awesome. Um, yeah, she, it's hard to say, man. It's uh, Valentina is really, really good. And um, I, 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 I might get hate for this because he's had some boring uh, – "Quote unquote boring fights, but Israel Asanya. I just there's something about him. He's great. Uh, yes, and I just feel like people, yeah, oh, he's boring. He's so, like, well, dude, like he's trying to, you know. I do think though, because his next fight's with Alex Pereira in uh, in Madison Square Garden in uh, in November. On what November a fight! 12th, um, a guy like him, like he's got to he's got to bring it. He ha I he will have to bring it against a guy like Alex Pereira. He he's cannot, gonna have to. And yeah. he's he he has that fire and that motivation. He wants to shut people up because everyone's saying, "Oh, he this guy knocked you out cold, blah blah blah, stuff like that." Right? So yeah. I think we're gonna see a we an Israel Adesanya on that like Paulo Costa type level fight. That's what I hope at least. Mm -hmm. Like so for yourself, like who would you say is like your go to fighter? Uh, I've always been a Cody Garbrandt guy. So you said being emotionally invested in a fighter how do you think i've been the past five years <laughs> yeah it's not looking good for uh cody man it's, he's uh... he, i think he's fighting i saw today ronnie yaha they rescheduled that for october 1st um obviously everyone knows ronnie yaha has never finished anyone in his career so they're obviously trying to get cody get his mojo back yeah. he needs this and if he doesn't win this i think you know what he, he I don't know what's next, but regardless, end of the day, he's set. He's a former UFC champion. I'm also a like you're you're aware of this a uh, huge Charles Jordan guy. Like like I said earlier, when I was went viral for getting assaulted, like Charles reposted my uh, TikTok and messaged me saying like you did the right thing, blah blah blah, fighting back. And he's just a great guy. And peep, I've been watching him since TKO. My fr friend of mine, John Ramdeen, used to commentate for him TKO. And uh, he's just so talented. And now people are seeing what I've been seeing since like 2015, 2016, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I think he beat Burgos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that'll be, no, didn't he already fight Burgos? Yeah, that's, I mean, I, like he he lost. It was uh, the UFC Rhode Island or whatever, New York yeah, some, a couple of weeks ago. Burgos looked good. He did. His, he looked real good, but I was kind of shitty because that was like, jordan's opportunity to get in the top 15 but yeah. uh i don't think that loss he didn't lose any of his stock in that fight he he looked i mean that first round it's like it depends who you want to give it to but you're telling me like he got dominated in the second i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that burgos wrestling looked amazing but the way he just recovered and just put a beating on burgos afterwards almost finished him too so there's there's a lot of guys uh in the ufc in in the ladies too but there's a lot of guys in the UFC who are not always the ranked fighters, or they kind of they they kind of emerge around that that top fifteen to up to top twenty, right? That obviously is in an official ranking, but they kind of hang around that 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 middle of the pack there. And it's like guys like Brian, Brian Barberina, who's so fucking close to breaking that top fifteen. I think he did at one point. Quote me if I'm wrong. Um, but guys like him, who yeah, okay, maybe he's not ranked. But people like to watch him because he brings a fight and he's every single time. Like I honestly, him and fucking Robbie Lawler, like what he did to Robbie Lawler, like Robbie had him backed up, and I get it because you know, guy like Robbie Lawler, he just yeah, he's yeah. he he's great. But I mean, Brian just came back and said, "No, fuck you, I, I'm gonna win this fight," and he came back and and just and just destroyed yeah, Robbie. That, and, that was awesome. I yeah, remember so, you know guys like him or. I'm trying to think, like, even just, I mean, Charles Jordan, he was kind of in that mix. Or he is still in that mix. Um, even Shane Burgos, like, he's, I think he still has a top 15 spot. Yeah, right now, he's like, been, like, defending his ranking his past couple of fights. So, because, uh, yeah, I think he's, like, ranked 14th. But, yeah, yeah. The, back to that Barbarina fight, though. Like, I remember watching that, and, like, obviously, I was a little by like, Robbie Lars legend, but us speaking to Barbarina before that fight we made me want him to a win. Little biased, yeah. Little biased and all my boys, they're big Lawler fans because they only they know him real well. And they're like, 
they're like, oh, he's piecing up your boy. I'm like, nah, bro, like Barberina's a dog. <laughs> he's he's going to come back. And then when he knocked out Lawler, I was like, I told you so, everybody. Like just saying that, like, and then they're like, okay. So, but yeah, that was a, that was a scrap for sure. Even Vicente Luque, I know he made his way up the rankings. He lost yeah, last, he night, lost last which, night, Jeff Neal. Which, yeah. Jeff Neal looked great though. Holy. He did look good. But also Luque just didn't, I don't know what it was. He just didn't look. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it didn't seem he really showed up because there was like this time last year, everyone was thinking he could have been a, a possible title challenger. Like what he what he fucking did to Kiesa. Like Dude, what, what a fight that was. That was unbelievable. Yeah, just what he's done for a lot of opponents. But I will say, he does have a problem getting hit in the middle. Takes a little shots up the middle, and he's uh, he does sometimes take a lot of damage to give damage. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, he's been nothing but impressive. So I think there was probably something going on. I'm sure we're gonna hear something like you know, I came in injured or you know, bad camp or something. Yeah, yeah, he didn't really look like himself. But I mean, yeah. regardless, he's a dog too. Like he's had some great fights. Yeah. So uh, about Luke, yeah, like I just find like he's also been one of those guys that just been in that kind of uh, of course uh, he was ranked like six and now he took oh he was he was like he's that guy that you know like i thought we'd be seeing him fighting for it him or we're gonna see him fighting for a title soon like that when he beat kiesa i was like okay this guy's like one or two fights away from a title shot and then i think he's on a two fight slump now so it sucks because you know he's possibly title contender worthy but uh mm-hmm. it's just yeah, yeah i don't really know what's going on i mean below muhammad his last fight i mean he's a below's an unreal wrestler and then um or prior to last night his fight and then uh last night jeff neal i i think a lot of people had were underestimating him because uh, i mean he went on two fights slump and i mean i don't know he just his boxing was just so damn crisp last night i, I was very impressed yeah, and I think, like, he kind of had to do that, you know, after his showing with, like, Thompson. Like, Thompson fucking lit him up good. Pieced and, him up all night. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, like, it just, that's just kind of what happened. And, um, yeah, so with Jeff Neal, like, Jeff Neal just came in. I think Jeff Neal still needs about two wins, I, I believe. I, I think he oh, should yeah. probably get two wins unless the way he, whoever he fight, depending on who he fights, uh it just depends on who he fights and when he fights like it all comes down but you know how the ufc works you know how mma math works and yep. uh you know how the ufc likes to kind of make fights according to what what's gonna make more money not what fucking makes sense most of the time yeah uh <laughs> mm-hmm. but uh yeah i know so you got like i mean that welterweight rankings you would have obviously you got edwards fighting kamaru Usman uh both of these there hamza yeah uh, who else like, Bel- B- B- Bel- muhammad, Bilal, like, muhammad like, yeah i hate how people give him so much crap because i mean i get it like maybe it's not consistent the lack lack of finishes i'd say yeah but you know what though man like i gotta say though like he's still he's still being guys He's still yeah. doing it i think just like just kind of going back recently earlier he's just kind of a lay and pray type of guy like you're telling me Bilal Muhammad's gonna sell pay per views? What? What? Name one thing Bilal Muhammad has done. I think he got knocked out by Luke in the first fight. That's probably that was it. That's the only thing. And uh, my one buddy Nate, uh, shout out Nate Newmaster. Yeah, I, I want to get him on this podcast soon. He's very knowledgeable in MMA. He thinks his nickname is the worst name. Like, remember the name. He thinks that's the worst nickname in MMA. In MMA. Well, the thing is, unfortunately. <laughs> When uh when when he won his last fight, they obviously they when the UFC posts sometimes they'll post like who won the fight according to what's going on, but they they post it and they have remember the name. <laughs> Someone posted uh, a comment. They said something like uh uh Bilal uh, uh forget the name Bel- Muhammad or <laughs> Bell uh um uh, yeah like don't remember the name or whatever it was, or they're just making fun of his nickname, which I get. It is kind of a weird nickname. And actually, uh, uh, Steph and I were talking about last night and some of these nicknames that these guys are coming up with, like, uh, like obviously the ghost pepper, um, you know, our guy that we, we talked to, um, like even with him, like he, he's like, uh, 
you know, his is the ghost pepper. And she's like, what the fuck? And like, she's like, what's with all these names on here? I said, Oh, the ghost pepper. I had to tell her the story. Cause he told it to me. And, but yeah, like some of these nicknames that these guys come up with, like, um, Oh, oh, there was another, I think it was the one girl that won the TUF last night. Um, uh, uh, Killa Mil uh, Miller, uh, uh, Julia Miller. I want to, I'm trying to think of what her, uh, nickname was. It might've been her or it was, it was a girl that fought earlier on the card, I, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a female fighter and she just had like, it's like, it was, she like, she's like, what's with the nickname? But yeah, like with Bell Muhammad, I'm like, I gotta say, I'm nothing but happy for the guy. Like he's still climbing those rankings. He had a, he's been having to fight most of the top guys and he's silently uh, working his way up. But I mean, yeah. Sean Brady, I think that's his next fight. Yeah. Uh, Cause he was, Bilal wanted that Hamza fight. Like he yeah. was, he was pretty asking for that didn't get it now he's getting sean brady another guy that's got a lot of hype another undefeated guy in, in the welterweight rankings so yeah. i'm actually looking forward to that fight because i mean sean brady's got some really really good jujitsu and that fight's definitely going to the ground so i mean yeah and, and the thing is when i think more about it when if bell muhammad is gonna fight someone like comes at chemaev i don't know how that fight would go because chemaev has got great wrestling but I don't know, man. Like, I think Chemaev, he got fucking exposed. Like, I don't think, like, he's 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 extremely huge for a welterweight. Mm -hmm. And I think it showed, like, his cardio is not going to hold up. Yeah, he uh, he lost that invincible status. Like, going into to the Burns fight, everyone's like, this guy's only been in the ring or the octagon for barely any time. He's finishing everyone. Like, only no, it was a, he only got hit, like, once in three fights, which is yeah. an incredible stat. But then had a war with Burns and now everyone's looking at him like, Oh, he's, he's, he's kind of human. Like he's still an absolute beast, yeah. but he's kind of human. Well, in the Burns fight, like he got, he got this shit kicked out of him. And I still believe he lost that fight. That overhand, course, right. That Burns landed. I thought that was over. I, when he yeah. dropped, I was like, Holy shit. Like fucking Gilbert Burns. Yeah. Yeah, man. But of I course, think, uh, I, I called actually, it. I said, I, I said, as soon as they went to the decision, I'm like, watch UFC give it right to, Give it, give it right to uh, Chmaev. I guarantee they will. What they do, they give to Chmaev. I'm like, hmm, I wonder why they would do that, right? Yeah, give but it to the... Fight, of course, they're going to give it to Chmaev. What do you think? Like, Oh, no doubt. It's the up-and-comer. I don't know. I, I had to rewatch the fight. I didn't, I honestly thought Gilbert Burns won, too. I'm not going to lie. But uh, it would have to rewatch it and break it down more. But it was close, to be fair. And it was entertaining as hell. Oh no! It was it was still a great fight. Yeah, it was. That was a good one. But there's a. I mean, there's a lot of good fights coming up for right now. Like we got Dominic Cruz back in action next week too. Yeah. Like him and Cheeto Vera. That's, I, that's and I think Jose. I think he's fighting. Is he fighting on the, the on that card or is he fighting uh two seventy eight? I think I don't know what I think that's on a pay per view or what Jose Aldo and Marab. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good or is that is that next week? It I'm might sure. be next week. Yeah, you might have to look that up, but yeah, I might wait. Let me let me get yeah, that a look. Geez. Yeah, because well, anyway, the fact that Josie Aldo is still kicking out there and he's I mean Yeah, that's on the, the Usman Okay. Uh, that's what I thought. Usman I just, Edwards card. That yeah. Anyways, but yeah, Aldo. Wow. I mean, when he went to 135, I was like, dude, this guy could barely make weight at 45. Like, what is he doing? But, I mean, we all know that he probably won that fight versus Marais, even though that was his first fight. Oh, and then God. he brought it to Peter Yan. That was a great fight. But he even though he lost. Fight. Yeah. And now he's found, I think he's on a three-fight win streak. And, I mean, if he beats Marab, I think he's next in line. Yeah. And the thing is, too, like, as much as he's kind of had up and downs, like the fact that Aldo, the all the things that he's kind of had to go through at one forty five, and the fact that he was a, he's able to get down to one thirty five is insane. I know there was talks about like the diet that he was doing. I think he went through a whole vegan diet. I believe hmm. I think it was vegan. I don't think it, it could have been vegetarian too, but it might have been. I, I want to say it was vegan. I would have to look it up, but. Uh, yeah, with Josie Aldo, apparently the diet that he's doing is is insane. Um, 
I don't know. Like it, it's, it's crazy. Like people talk about all these diets and, and you know what, this is what's going to work. This is what's going to make you lose weight. I mean, for a guy like Josie Aldo though, like he was already kind of a small, he was, he had a small frame compared to someone like Connor, who's had to cut to one forty five. Mind you, Connor is not a one forty, is not a natural one forty five. Not um, at all. But, uh, but a guy like Josie Aldo, he was already kind of small, so I can understand how he kind of he he'd be able to get down to one thirty five. But apparently, yeah, he talked about how apparently he had a he he was on. I, I wanted to stick to the whole vegan diet story because I feel like that's what it was. Yeah, I, I didn't hear about that, but I, I know a lot of people were like, was like, okay, like maybe Aldo should come up to 55. Because remember for way back when uh, yeah. they wanted to make that super fight with uh, Anthony Pettis, which I mean, wow, what's going on with that guy? <laughs> like, oh, one, he's like, what, one and four in PFL? One and, one and five, I think, in PFL. Lost. To, I didn't watch the fight, but uh, he lost to Stevie Ray again. Yeah. Don't don't know what's going on, man. Yeah, Anthony Pettis, man. Like, and it's not like he's you know forty years old, and you know oh, he's like what thirty. You look at yourself maybe? in the mirror, right, and say, "Time to retire." But no, he's just he just had a, a run of bad luck. I think he's just had maybe it's just the the fact that he's had bad matchups. I don't know. I think he uh, he may have peaked early. Like he had all that success when he was young. Like everyone knows him being on the Wheaties box and. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of pressure. It's hard to, it's hard to, you know, be elite. Who knows what's going on in the background? He's getting all this money. Is he partying? I don't know. Maybe he's just not t taking things as seriously. And then don't you don't know. realize that when you're on top, you got guys below you absolutely grinding extremely mm -hmm. hard to get to that position to get the belt, right? But, I mean, at least his brother, his younger brother's finding a lot of success. So, yeah, he is. Uh, he, he got the belt he over is. there. And... He, he got the belt. I think he, uh, towards acl or something like that so he's yeah, out for the true. tournament which what you, do you, uh, nice let's talk, let's talk about that tournament what do you what's your thoughts on danny sabatello <laughs> fuck i i gotta have, I, i've been wanting to enter i've been wanting to do media for that guy for so long i think i did a uh, post fight uh media for him but um when he just when he, when he had his first win in 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 uh, bellator i got to do a post fight interview with him and Man, the guy, he's just like, he's like the Bellator version of Colby Covington. You exactly. know, it's all bullshit. You know, it's, he just, he's there. He's being entertaining. I love it. I like what he, he brings a lot of, um, I feel like Bellator needed a guy like that to kind of, everybody knows it's just, it's all an act. It's, you know, but at the end of the day, it's still entertaining. It, it's nice yeah. having a guy that like that, that can be funny and, you know, have a guy that, you know, he's got the shades on and everything and say, I'm going to whoop Bleach everybody's ass. Hair. I like it. Yeah, he's, um, I mean, he's, he's fighting for the belt next. Him and Stotts, that's that's a good fight. Yeah, and Stotts, man. I mean, that's, and I, before you brought up uh, the uh, buddy there, yeah, Stotts, like, fuck. Like, Bellator, yeah, so you have UFC and Bellator. I get it. There's always going to be that comparison. There's no doubt about it. But Bellator, man, they've been having really good strides with those bantamweights, and they have some great bantamweights. Yeah, they really do. But again, and, like it's that it's that sweet spot of a weight where uh, a majority of fighters, like are, you're gonna have a more. I feel like you're gonna have more of a hand pick of fighters that are gonna be able to make that kind of weight, where they're whether it's uh, one, you know, one twenty five, one thirty five, or excuse me, one thirty five, one forty five, one fifty five. I feel like that's why it's such a sweet spot there because a lot of guys, um, maybe that's more of the average that that you're gonna the hand pick uh, average you're gonna get uh, guys that can make that kind of weight. Whereas if you, you know you only have so many guys in the world that are gonna be six something and two hundred something pounds that are only gonna fight at light heavyweight, maybe light heavyweight and are only gonna fight at heavyweight. Um, and then you might have, and then you have particular guys like guy like George St. Pierre who. In, in one, and in fact, he did make 155 for fun, apparently, uh, just to see if he could do it because he was going to tease a whole thing with Khabib. But mm. he's the kind of guy that he's too too small to really go up to 185, and there, that's a fact. But he's, well, kinda, he he's just perfect for 170. So, you, you know, you have a lot of these guys are just that you have such a good mix of guys that you could throw in uh, for that 135, 145, 155. Well, you're, and, are you talking? Uh, sorry, to cut you off. Are you talking about like tweeners, like those guys that are too, too big for like 
that's why everyone wants that 165 division, right? Because there's yeah. so many guys yeah. that are like that are like especially like Dustin Poirier, stuff like that, that are too big for 155, but they're too uh too small for 70. Yeah, and that's what they gotta deal with the UFC. They gotta make that 165, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. Not right now. Um, I Maybe mean, they did not, great yeah. about having the women's flyweight. They kind of, uh, I think they kind of made some adjustments and helped a few ladies out trying, you know, because I mean, again, like I know people give shit uh, to people when they don't make weight, but again, it, it's um, people's bodies change as they age. And uh, I think they figured out a little bit of a problem with that with, for the ladies there. So it was good that the ladies had a little bit more of an option with the three weight classes there or four, excuse me, four, um, but uh, with the featherweight but that's uh, non-existent <laughs> yeah i don't understand that one but they they made that weight class just for chris cyborg literally and then it bit them in the ass when man of uh lit uh litter clock so yeah um yeah it, with the bellator though yeah with the bellator what they're doing with these grand prix i love it it's and it's great you watch it on youtube it's awesome uh, yeah no pay-per-view no nothing pay-per-view, nothing it's great but the problem is they always have it on a friday night which Unfortunately for a guy like me, I work a lot of Fridays Mm -hmm. Um, and they're always like, they always started like three o'clock, four o'clock or five o'clock, you know, 5 p.m. It's like, dude, it's like, can't you guys not just start until nine o'clock when I'm done work? Like, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Belters, I mean, some divisions are lacking, but they like their featherweight division is really good. Like, uh, I mean, Adam Boric, like I I texted you as soon as that fight was announced. Adam Boric versus uh, Pitbull. Wow. I'm excited for that one. Adam Borch, yeah, frick. He's gonna he's coming in with strides and uh um new blood going into that, that division for sure. Because yeah, I feel like in the last four or five years they kind of had the same guys in that mix and now they're starting to get that new blood coming in. Uh so it, it's really exciting to kind of see what Bellator is doing and and I just I it's cool how they had the whole Grand Prix, but I find it's really a little unusual the fact that um, if you have a champion in the Grand Prix, so a guy like, say you have, uh, like, okay, so, I mean, it would have been Pettis. Uh, yeah, so Pettis has got the belt, and Rufon Stotts was supposed to fight him. Yeah. So he gets an automatic uh, chance at a title, but if he beats him anyway, um, so if he beats him, he, then he a gets a belt, and he goes and moves on to the round. But it's so unusual that – like there should be an exception where if you're the if you're the champ you you keep the belt on the side or you don't go in the tournament or something i just like where you are you try, kind of saying like he shouldn't be title defenses and then the, the final should be a, the, for the belt kind of deal i don't know it'd be a little confusing though you know what i mean what's that like the main the final of the grand prix should only be a title fight uh well no like so obviously pettis before he got injured he's got the belt yeah um but it say if there's somebody in the ranking it's okay so say rufon stotts was i don't know where he is well he's now he's gotta be number he's one. now the inter- he's interim he's the interim champ now uh yeah so obviously he's interim champ but let's hypothetically speaking that he's ranked seven right now let's just say if he was and he's gonna fight Pettis next because that's how they matched up in the bracket. Well, how is that kind of that's kind of weird for him to be number seven to 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 go for the belt, and then, but there could be a guy number one or two who should be really going for the belt, but because he's Wait automatically the bracket. Him in yeah. the bracket, and he's finding him in the bracket, he's gonna get a shot a title shot. It's just interesting how they they didn't really like they didn't take away the whole title thing. It would, it would suck to be on the other side of the bracket because that means you got to win two fights to get your title shot. And you're get the, the million dollars, yeah. And get the million dollars. But if you're on the other side where the champ is, you could get a title shot after one immediately or just after one one win. So, But again, I feel like, I mean, these guys, they're not throwing guys in there rank 12 or, you know, rank 15. Like they, these, most of these guys are in the top five, top six, top seven. So arguably, let's say, you know, the champ beats, you know, the first guy in the first round and then the next guy in the round, he's fighting a number four ranked guy. Okay. He, get, he gets a title shot. I'm not, I guess it's not too weird, but yeah. It, yeah. It's a little different, but you know, I like what Bellator is doing regardless of what I'm, the, the spiel that I'm going on about. Uh, I like what Bellator is doing. I think it's great. And uh, yeah. 
like going back to Danny Sabatello, fuck, I, I love the guy. I think he's cool. And uh, Rufon Stotts, he's on, he's on Horizon, and and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just really excited to see. I know what what's gonna happen with that division there for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be a. I think it's gonna be a good scrap. I mean, two guys. The, the build up will be pretty nuts because two they both talk, right? So. Oh, 100 percent, and it's gonna be fun. It's it, it's fun, like it's fun for the fans, and it and it brings the draws, you know. Yeah, 100 percent. I know in Bellator, I think one of my favorite guys to watch is actually uh, Aaron Pico. Aaron Pico, yeah, he's seen, he's a tough dude, and he's freaking he's good. But they uh they fucked around when he started. They gave him killers right away. Oh yeah, that's what I mean. That Borch lost, and then Henry Corrales like gave him killers immediately, and like now they're doing they're realizing okay, like this guy is a star. You know what? They're, he, they're not giving him anyone insane recently but he's on a six fight win streak guy can do it all he can wrestle he's got great jujitsu dynamite in his hands and uh i mean he's a gold what like like he was almost an olympian for wrestling yeah i think he was an alternate or just missed i don't know but uh, i always tune in when he fights he's yeah and, and with that being said with a guy like him um, I, I, so I was asking, I was wondering about the whole thing with Josie Aldo and, and his, uh, weight cutting to, to Bantam weight. So I, I found out, I was looking it up that, so what, what he was doing was he was on a train low sleep high, uh, carb diet. And, and then a month before, um, the one fight, I think, I think the first fight he ever had, he was at 147 and he switched to a keto ketogenic diet, um, the week before the weigh-in. So it, I don't know. That's, that's really like, that's crazy. So he mm -hmm. lost it. Like it, it's again, it's all freaking science, man. It's all science when it comes to that weight cutting. So yeah, he did it. He like, that just goes to show you how desperate he was to want to make that, that one thirty five. Well, I mean, that's part of your job. You, you may show up, make weight, then you fight. You got to do that. Right. Well, it, yeah, but I mean, like, it just goes to show how much work he was willing to do just to get to 135. Because, you know, he couldn't stay in that 145. I just think that maybe maybe the 135, he's going to find more success. He has a little bit more power becoming, you know, being the bigger guy. I don't know if that's what he was thinking. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, 135, he's look, he's still looking great. And mm -hmm. uh, But I, I noticed his style has changed so much. He doesn't kick anymore. I think uh... – it has to be some kind of damage. Yeah. Yeah, he because he has really stopped his famous leg kicks. He's thrown yeah. a couple. He's thrown yeah. a couple, but they've been very brief. And uh, he's using a lot of those those kidney punches. Mm -hmm. He's He's got really good boxing. Like, very well, he's good. He's changed up his boxing so much. Like, his hand, well, he has to. And that's a part of being a fighter. Sometimes you have to adapt to... You gotta uh, evolve. So that you're you're facing now than 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 you did six years ago. Hundred percent, yeah. Uh, no, I'm I'm looking really looking forward to that Marab matchup. I just, I Marab's kind of one of those guys, mm -hmm. like we we're kind of talking about. I forget who it was, like or kind of he's kind of like a Bilal Muhammad, like he's he's up there in the rankings. He's on a big win streak, but he's just uh, not fun to watch, really. In, in all honesty. <laughs> Uh, that Marlon Marais fight was nuts though. Like, but other than that, like, he's kind of like just a wrestler, a little lay and pray. I mean, he's he's good at what he does. I got to respect that. But like, I'm not tuning in to watch Marab unless he's fighting someone like Jose Aldo. Yeah, and it's like it's like a guy like Curtis Blades. I mean, great guy. Uh, I'm sure he'd be a great guy to chat with and whatnot. But people don't like style because he just. However, I he's had one one finish where I was like, fuck, I had to turn away from the, the TV. It was uh, when he beat Alistair over him and he opened up the guy's forehead with the elbows. Yeah. And that was nasty. Watch as he's hitting him in the head and the fucking blood spurting. And, and uh, yeah, like frick. Man. Curtis blades. Yeah. He's the type of guy, like a lot of his fights have been lay and pray, but oh. then all of a sudden he'll come out and knock someone out like JDS, like that fight. He got first round knockout. And yeah. then uh, who the fight before Aspinall, um, Chris Dawkins. I mean, he sparked him too. So I mean, yeah, he, yeah. he has he has that in his locker. Like he can crack if he like throw hands if he wants to. But uh, sometimes you just yeah. Most likely you're expecting uh, 
a little lay and pray. But I mean, and I, he's another guy who we were talking about, like kind of like a Vince, uh, Vincente Luque, like just on the verge of a title shot. He's he's bad. That guy's got to be bound to fight for a title. And then he'll come up so close and then just lose one big fight. Like just, his- just feed him. Friend. We're talking, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about the same guy, right? Chris, 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 Curtis, Curtis yeah. Blades. Yeah. Not Chris just, Curtis. <laughs> just feed him Francis and gone and he'll get knocked out again. It yeah, just he's... seems like every time he's kind of been on the verge, then he fights Francis and gone and he's got knocked out both, both, both times. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I wonder what's next with him after that Aspinall fight. Like he's obviously got to be still in shape. I wonder if he's going to want to fight or if he's going to be uh, kind of strategic for who he wants to fight next. Cause Let's bring this up. John Jones and Stipe. Yeah. That's yeah, a big one. Yeah. I don't even know if the fight's going to happen because they really, yeah, they've kind of talked about that would be the fight to kind of make. But I feel like John Jones, I just, I know that, you know, he did a lot of great things at at, at uh, 205. But I'm saying right now, John Jones, he got, like, he lost his last two fights. And I'm not even going to be fucking nice about it. He lost his last no, was his last fight? Well, he it was the Dominic fight. Reyes for sure. Reyes for sure. And then Santos Thiago Santos. Yeah, what I was gonna say. I think he won against Santos, but he just hasn't been dominating recently. Like he's no. been very hesitant. But yeah, I I, I believe he lost that Dominic Reyes fight. Oh, I Dominic thought Reyes, Reyes. He Dominic Reyes beat him maybe even four to one, but definitely sure. three to two. I think three, he won the first three, three rounds three two, pretty sure. handedly. Yeah, and I feel like John Jones. And the problem is, yes. I think John would be a faster heavyweight than some of the other guys. No, no question. I mean, you look at him. You look. You at see his guys. recent post on Instagram. How big he looks. Yeah, but he's not like I don't feel like he's. I don't know. He's definitely. I don't think him cutting to two hundred five did anything to his performance by any means. I think you know he there was no bad weight cutting that was going on with him. I think he's always been a good athlete. But, uh, you know, him going up to, you know, heavyweight, that's going to be a very big challenge. I don't, I'm not, I think he can still find success there. I'm not, I wouldn't doubt it. But for him to fight a guy like Stipe is, um, is, a, is a good fight. Um, yeah, I mean, but the thing he... is, is he going to take a hit from a guy like Stipe versus a guy that's coming up to 205? It's, yeah. it's definitely interesting. Well, he, I mean, for two of his last title defenses, he fought two guys that were one eighty like middleweights, like Tiago Tiago Santos and Anthony Smith, former uh, middleweights, right? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, no, it's going to be very interesting. It just sucks that it's been taking so long, but because I mean, regardless of his former like mistakes and stuff, like John Jones is arguably one of the greatest. I don't think he's not my goat, but statistically, you could definitely put him there. For sure. Um, and the thing is, though, with him, I think after everything that's going to happen, there's a lot of people that want would like to see him get knocked out, and that's that's understandable. Um, yeah, and I think with him, even the guy like Francis Ngannou, who, holy shit, his last fight, I just, I was like, oh my god, look, who's this wrestler? Yeah, um, well, then we found out about the ACL. My friend, actually, funny story about that fight. <laughs> this is like one of the craziest bets i've ever seen okay. so right he bets he bet some kind of money for biggie to beat moreno he okay. won 50 bucks right and he yeah. says fuck it i'm throwing 50 bucks francis and ganu decision and we're like what the hell oh wait, whatever that's a hail mary he won like 900 dollars. yeah he that's was freaking pure. out that's just like i don't know if he had a, a crystal ball in front of him when he did it but i gotta say like that's like that's some of the craziest like luck that yeah. you get there. Cause like you would think a decision by, but like, did you say decision by win by decision or just decision? When it, it wasn't just, it wasn't win by decision. Like that's was the, the play. That is just, that has got to be, that wasn't just Francis. The, it wasn't just Francis and gone into win. Cause I'm pretty sure Francis was the heavyweight or the, um, obviously he was the heavyweight, um, the favorite to go in, but he put it like a prop for a decision. And he was pumped. And I got to say, like, a lot of my buddies, you know, they they ask me for my picks and stuff, too. And, like, I, I couldn't have predicted that, you know. But, you know, though, like, if that was me and it went to, like, round three, 
then your hands start to sweat because you're just hoping, dude, you better freaking just, you know, lay and pray, just do what you got to do to win the fight by decision. And I win my $900. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. And with that whole heavyweight division, I just feel, yeah, with John Jones coming in there, it will be interesting to see how John will be. I think John will bring a tactical approach for sure. But it's just, you know, heavyweights, man. Like, I feel like he's going to get hit by heavyweight, and we're going to see what it's like to see him get hit by heavyweight. Yeah, because he's, I mean, yeah. I think, what's the hardest John Jones has ever been hit? That's, uh, I see Dominic Reyes. Dominic, like, he, he clocked him a few times. Yeah, he landed some big lefts. Yeah. I was, I when, when I was going to the judges' scorecard that fight, I was like, I think John Jones might lose. <laughs> like, but yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah. let's just hope john gets in the octagon soon man like he's regardless like i said of his mistakes and what he's done he yeah. is such a talented guy and he looks big he looks sharp and he got I, it'd be cool for him to become a two-way champ that would definitely if he becomes a two-way champ i think that puts him like almost in like he's people say he's a goat now like that's almost guaranteed yeah i, I mean he, he's gonna go in the hall of fame but I feel like it one more. I think if he has one more instant, if he has more one more stint outside the UFC, anything that happens, like you know, you never know what's going on in per, people's personal lot personal lives, but there's no excuse for what he's done. I would say the UFC has to toss him. I, I know it's hard, but when you do that much, you know, you gotta UFC has to step in and say, okay, that's I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think Dana gives a shit. <laughs> you no, know what does. I mean? I'm a, yeah, let's if we're gonna get honest and we're not gonna be throwing out the dog shit to our viewers, but let's just say, yeah, he's gonna he's Dana's too much of a superstar there. unless he does something fucking even more insane what he's done in the past. Uh DUI is not gonna make Dana White say or toss out uh John Jones. But like you look at a guy like Louis Pena, what did he do? He like hit his girlfriend or something and he Dude. got tossed in an instinct. Yeah. Dude, I'm not sure if that's why he got why he got released. But I know he had other legal shit that happened. He, yeah, he was. I don't know. He had some mental health problems. Uh, yeah. He fought recently, actually. Have you ever watched X MMA? Dude, they're signing some vets like Will Brooks and him. Five. That was a good scrap. Yeah, I've been wanting to uh, to cover the, for for an event like that. That'd be a really cool event to do. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're here in Canada, and of course. You know, still, you know, no events will come here because well, you know it's Canada and yeah, because it's a uh, they all the athletes have to be vaccinated and there's a lot of MMA fighters so that don't want the vaccine. But dude, I you and me, we got to go to BTC and do an event. Oh yeah, definitely. But the problem is they're over your way, man. You're gonna have to be the lone wolf going over there. I don't want to go by myself. <laughs> have fun. I know it sucks. I mean, the one I did in London was great. It was perfect. You know, it was an hour away. It wasn't too well, a little over an hour, but. It was an hour away. It wasn't too bad to to travel and, and go there for the day. I stayed the night. It was awesome. It's a great experience. Um, I feel like anybody who is in the MMA uh, journalism or who does like wants to do uh, cover a live event. It's a great it's a great experience to do. And it actually builds um, it really builds uh, your skill to interview fighters. And uh, because a lot of times. You can write stuff down, but a lot of times when, when a fighter, whoever wins, sometimes you have to pick who the winner is, and sometimes you, you don't know a whole lot about them. It's all about doing your homework. It's all about, uh, about yeah, it's just about covering the event, and you just learn to do things off the off the bat, which some people have the ability to do, but you have to learn that in, in, in this industry. Research is key. You oh. got to do your you got to do your homework. Those guys like John Morgan, all those guys, those guys are studying fights. Luke Thomas. Oh, yeah. Whatever, so I've got some sirens going on in Toronto, but sorry about that. But uh, yeah, they're doing their homework, man. They they live and breathe MMA. And well, and that's, that's it too, right? I mean, and that's their only job. That's the only focus. It's not uh, like you and me. We you you and me do this because we love it, and we do this on our our past time, you know. So oh, absolutely. Like you yeah. haven't made we yeah. haven't made a dollar doing this. We're just doing this because we enjoy talking about the sport and we enjoy meeting athletes For and we sure. enjoy learning about them, right? But it, I am welcoming any sponsors that want to come and sponsor. Uh, come on in, and I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna be like no, no, no. I don't want that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love what I do. I love I love doing this with you. <laughs> I love what I do. 
I like doing these uh, stuff, uh, doing the interviews with you. Uh, I kind of came off wrong. Then doing the <laughs> interviews with you, but yeah, I know. Like I, I do, I do enjoy what I do because I, because it's it's a passion. And unfortunately, and and before we get to the end of this, we got like five minutes. We got a couple minutes, yeah. Before we, um, on. one thing I I gotta get off my chest, and I might get hate for it, is but the people you get these young people that are trying to get into MMA journalism because they see how successful these people get and they're just all, they're so power hungry. Um, and they're all about trying to get the sponsors and make them yeah. money off of it. And it's like, but you don't see the same kind of passion. Yeah. Um, you... And they, that, that, that is subjective. I will say that's subjective of what I'm doing, but I don't know. That's how I perceive it. Maybe I'm wrong. Do you ever watch James Lynch? He's uh Fuck yeah. He is, I mean, he like, has he's like a Canadian amazing, legend. he has amazing content. I go on his streams. He is, he is so good. I'm, I have a good relationship with him. We might have to get him on this podcast sometime. We'll have him on sometime. Just yeah. to shoot his, yeah. And he's, yeah, we'll, he's yeah. by far my favorite journalist, like in the MMA community. I think he's great. Yeah. James Lynch. He's, um, he obviously he's professional, he, but I like the fact that he has that very lone wolf kind of, um, well, He's not signed. He has like, he works for like fourteen different companies. Oh, does he really? Yeah, he uh, he doesn't he doesn't care to work for MMA Junkie or M- MMA Fighting. You know, they have their guys there. Like, he's doing his own thing, and I'm pretty sure he's making a lot more money working for all these separate companies rather than working yeah. for one big one. I know he's doing. Yeah, he. I I know for sure there was one or two that he frequently does work for, and then he does his Lynch Sports, and he does his like. Uh, I know he does his own stuff and then he does do work for like uh yeah like he posts clips whatever well, he, gets, Schmo, he, he know, gets paid by whoever to do an interview and then they let him use some of the clips of the interview to post on his youtube channel yeah and he even has a whole thing with chris cyborg him and chris they yeah he works that. for chris cyborg yeah he too. does like their he does like a weekly or like a bi-weekly uh podcast thing I, i'm not sure if it would be considered podcast but that's kind of the the gist yeah. of it they do kind of like uh kind of like a podcast little show for yeah for so many minutes and um yeah i know and and it's kind of cool how he's been able to do that and he he really is like a canadian legend for us because a lot you get a lot of these like mma junkie even uh it, it's been beautiful to watch uh mma island like uh um chris uh chris over there that the start mma i i believe he, he started it i don't want to throw any words in anybody's mouth but um uh, like what mma island has done holy mm-hmm. shit they've done a really really good job they've really set the platform for what you want to do how hard you want to work to uh to build your brand and mma island i can remember they were like i remember talking with chris and this was like I, this might have been when the pandemic was going i think this is when the pandemic just started rolling around and Chris and I were shooting the shit and whatnot. And it's like, yeah, you know, you know, we're doing all this stuff. And then go from there to now. And they're like, they got like probably 15, 20 people working for them. And they've got like people, they're sending people over and freaking all over the States. And he's doing, he's doing the media for UFC now. And he's, yeah, it's, he's it's, on that. it's so cool to see what Chris has done. I mean, respect for that guy. And I really look up to him at times for inspiration and, uh, and whatnot so they they're doing a lot of cool things too so it's really cool to see a lot of the mma community kind of come together and help each other out and uh yeah so going back yeah chris and james lynch is just he's an awesome dude and any any in in his job like he he'll also post a lot of stuff to help you know up and coming yeah um, he'll, he he yeah, posts like uh, like uh tips a lot of tips and stuff which is yeah. fantastic great watches i uh I do look up to him when it comes to this sort of stuff. So, um, but shout out James Lynch. You're the man. Yes, you are James Lynch. And, uh, I, I might have to send this to him, but you know, and also with James, like he'll, he'll talk about how you approach fighters. The number one thing that pisses me off. I'll be like, how are you him. feeling? What's <laughs> That's that? the way you, you just never ask a fighter. How are you feeling right off the bat? <laughs> well, I was going to say that, but no, um, a lot of times like you'll all like comment on a, fighters photo i'll see like a media it hasn't happened in a long time but i've never seen one i can't remember i I can't remember what they were called but they they legit asked a fighter and tag them interview sometime it's like what the fuck you need to yeah it's that's all private message them and like you need to talk to them in uh uh like like in person or like 
uh, DM them or email emailing them is the most professional way. So I, I just like sometimes the way people treat these fighters, it's like, come on, guys, like you yeah. gotta work a little bit harder than that. But anyway, we're well, we're running out of time here. So um, you know, I, I just this has been awesome and uh likewise. Uh for our viewers, uh please tune in for the next episode. Um and uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed this one. Uh, I know I did, and I'm sure I, I I'm not going to speak for Chris. Chris, you can say 100%. Can say. That was fun, man. I'm looking forward to this. I, I It's great to be podcasting again and just shoot, yeah. shoot like you said, just shooting the shit, having a good time, man. It's all, it's all, or, you know, it's a good time. Yeah. So, guys, tune in to the next one. Um, and uh, be sure to follow our, uh, follow us on YouTube and our Instagram page, Empire Universe Media. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.